Happy Monday. If you're like the Lindsmeyer household this morning, we got a case of the Mondays. Nobody in our house wanted to get up today. So I get it. But hey, it's a it's a toolbox type of a week. And we're gonna solve systems of equations this week, just like we did last week, except now we're gonna do it algebraically. So we not have to do it with those stinking graphs and all that fun stuff. We're gonna go hardcore into the algebra. You've seen this before. You saw it in Algebra 1. You expanded on it a little bit in Geometry. You really expanded on it in Algebra 2. Okay? And so you've seen this. This is probably like the fourth or fifth time that you've seen solving systems of equation by substitution. So what I would like you to do is I'm not going to teach it right now. Okay? As a warm-up, I want to see what you remember. Okay? So just try this problem as a warm-up. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to do it, see where you get. If you don't get an answer, or if you get lost or you get confused, that's fine. Okay, That's totally fine. We'll go over it then, um, and we'll go through the steps and all that fun stuff. But try this problem just right now. Okay? So I don't even care what you got. I was walking around the room and I saw some some different things on some different ones. So let's let's dive in to this one, the same one. Okay. So it's the same problem that we just had. Okay. Except now it's just not color coded for us. And why I didn't color code it, I don't. Know. Okay. But there are some steps to go along with it. First step in substitution is. You need to solve one of the equations for one of the variables. Okay? And most of you in the room had that done. Okay? Maybe not the yeah. smartest of all solvings it, but we at least had the concept done. And it doesn't really matter which one you want, but you got to be smart. So if I'm looking at this at this particular problem, I am going to first solve this equation for y because it's the easiest one to solve for because it's just y already. I don't have to divide by 3. I don't have to divide by 2. I don't have to divide by negative 2. I'm just going to straight up solve it for the easy one. So if I solve this one for the easy one, I would add 2x to both sides. And that gives me y equals 2x plus 4. Love okay. Then what we do is now we're going to substitute. We're going to substitute what we did in step one, so this blue equation, we're going to substitute that into the other equation. Okay. So I'm going to take this 2x plus 4, and I'm going to put it in the other equation for y. So that's going to give me 3x plus 2 times the quantity 2x plus 4, and that's going to equal 1. Okay. We should have a one variable equation now. And it's either going to be all x's or all y's, or all one letter. Okay. All right. We got that. We're good there. Then we're going to solve that equation. So we'll probably have to do a little distribution, which is fine. We can handle that. So then this would be 3x plus 4x plus 8 equals 1. If I distribute the 2 in there. Okay. That's going to give me 7x plus 8 equals 1. Then I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. That's going to give me 7x equals negative 7. Divide both sides by 7. 
that's going to give me x is equal to negative 1. Okay. Then our next step is now we're going to substitute what we just had, what we just solved for. I'll put a purple box around it. We're going to substitute that back into, and now you've got three choices where you can put it into. You can put it into what you solved for in step number one. You can put it back into either your first original equation or your second original equation. Doesn't matter which of those equations you plug it back into. Two times negative one is negative two, plus four is two. If we would have put it in up here, three times negative one is negative three, added three to both sides, gives me two y equals four, y equals two, same thing. Put it in here. Negative two times negative one is two, Subtract 2 from both sides, y equals 2. Okay? So we get 2 no matter which of those three equations we put it in. And here is the kicker. Two things in this last step. First off, we have to write our answer in point form because this is taking the place of graphing. And when we were graphing, we found that point where those two lines intersected. That's what we're doing here. We're just doing it algebraically. But our answer is still a point. Okay? So we have to write it in x comma y form. And we should check it so that we know if we're right or not. Okay? So let's check it first before we uh, write it. So 3 times negative 1 plus 2 times 2 has to be 1, and negative 2 times negative 1 plus 2 has to be 4. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3, 2 times 2 is 4, negative 3 plus 4 is 1, checks out. Negative 2 times negative 1 is positive 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, checks out there. So my answer here is in point form, x comma y, or in alphabetical order if we're not dealing with x's and y's. So my answer there would be the point negative 1. Okay. Remembering this stuff again? Okay. Okay. So we got that. Okay. And that's it. So try this one now. Solve this one by using substitution. We just did. If it were me on this one, I would this I would solve the second equation for x. Okay? So I would solve this one for x by subtracting 5i from both sides. And that gives me x here equals negative 9 minus 5y. And honestly, really, truthfully, it doesn't even matter which order you have it in. If you had it negative 5y minus 9, that's fine too, but it's just kind of a, a rest over point. It's kind of a stopping point for you to go to the next one. Okay? Then I plug that in for x on this other equation. So that's going to be negative 9 minus 5y plus 3y, and that's going to equal negative 2. Solve that bad boy. So we've got negative 36 minus 20y plus 3y equals negative 2. So that is negative 36 minus 17y 
equaling negative 2. I would add 36 to both sides then. That gives me negative 17 y equaling positive 34 dividing by negative 17 gives me y equals negative 2. Okay. Then we plug in negative 2 back into this one. So that's going to be negative 9 minus negative 10, which is negative 9 plus 10, which is positive 1. Checking it, 4 times positive 1 is 4. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. 4 minus 6 is negative 2. Checks out. 1 is 1, 5 times negative 2 is negative 10, 1 minus 10 is negative 9, checks out. So the answer here is 1 comma negative 2. Not negative 2 comma 1, it's not the order in which you solve for them, it's x comma y. Good. Love it. Yeah. I know. Monday morning, it's not even a half an hour into class, and I drop an F word on you. Okay. All right. Fractions are our friends. Okay. But so, so I'm going to use you as an example. You don't like them, right? Love it. Okay. So let's get rid of them, and then we don't have to deal with them, right? Okay? So we can take this entire equation right here, and we can multiply it by 3, and we won't have a fraction. Because that 3 is going to get multiplied in there, in there, and in there. So this would become 2x plus... 9y equals, uh, what's that, negative 1, oh, no, yes, 102, I believe, yeah, okay. negative 102, yeah. Down here, we would take this entire equation, and we would multiply it by 4. Actually, let me do this. Let me tap the brakes. Just so that I can distinguish between two. One half times four is two. One fourth times four is 1, 1 half times 4 is okay. Same system of equations, just now we don't have that fear of fraction. Yes, ma'am? Because 2 divided by 3 times 3, for the second one, 1 divided by 2 times 4 is the same as 4 divided by 2. Yeah. Yeah. Go for it. Solve it from there. So I would probably solve this second equation here. 
for y, so I would add y and add 2 at the same time. So you can do that. And that's going to give me then 2x plus 2 equals y. Doesn't matter which side you solve, you put the variable on. Okay? Okay? So you can get that. Then we can plug that back into the other equation. So that would be 2x plus 9 times 2x plus 2. And that's going to equal negative 1, 2. So that would be 2x plus 18x plus 18 equals negative 102. So that's 20x plus 18 equaling negative 102. Then subtracting 18, that's going to give me 20 x equals negative 120, dividing by 20, gives me x here equals negative 6. If x is negative 6, then 2 times negative 6 plus 2 has to be y. Uh, so what is that? Negative 12 plus 2 is negative 10 is y. Okay. Now, when we put it back in, we always got to go back into our original equations. Okay. So the first equation was uh, 2 thirds times negative 6, because that would be x. Let's go back up now. There it is. Plus 3 times negative 10, and that's going to have to equal negative 34. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12, divided by 3 is negative 4. 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. Negative 4 plus negative 30 is negative 30. Checks out. 1 half times negative 6 minus 1 fourth times negative 10 has to be negative 1 half. 1 times negative 6 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3. 1 times negative 10 is negative 10, divided by 4. So that's going to be negative 10 fourths, so it changes to adding. And 10 fourths is really 5 halves. 3 is, or negative 3 I should say, is negative 6 halves. See what I did there? Made it in common denominator. Negative 6 halves plus 5 halves is negative 1 half. And that's what we needed to do. So it works out. So our answer here is negative 6 comma negative I gave you a worksheet earlier today. Um, for those of you at home, A-weekers, you got the worksheet last week. Um, virtual people, it is posted on It's Learning right now. There are four problems on there. I would only pick two of them to do. It doesn't have to be number one and number two. Okay. I would look for ones and do two of those by substitution save the other two for elimination, which is going to be Wednesday's topic. Wednesday's topic is going to be elimination. Thursday's topic is going to be the word problems, which is the back stuff. Okay? Right. Tomorrow there is a, a video 
for you to watch. It will be very brief. It will be under, it will probably be under 10 minutes. I almost wanted to say under five, but I don't know, I might talk a little bit. So it might be like six or seven minute video. Very important to watch though, and make sure you watch that video because it'll explain some more things about what we're doing. Okay? That's all I have for you today.